I think the conversation is just, all right, let's go out there and have fun. Don't hurt anyone. Exactly. You ready? Good. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to high school basketball here on Clutch Sports Media. We're live from Rock Valley College for the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic. We'll send it down to the PA announcer to get some introductions. They heard the area girls starters. Let's take a listen to the Nick Tan All Stars. battle uh, down underneath the basket between Esparza and Sullivan, uh, the two that you mentioned where he's going D1 right now. Of course, many of these girls may come end up here at RBC, so uh, excited for that. That's right, yeah, we got uh, you know, a couple players playing for Rock Valley this season, men's and women's, that both played in and around the area. And as you mentioned, I'm sure some of these players will play at this, you know, Rock Valley or in and around the area. It's always good to keep some local talent, but you do like to see the players get some recognition. And whenever you can go up to that next level play in college, that's always a very fun time. Just about ready for a tip. The area girls in the white uniforms and the Nick 10 girls in the colored uniforms here as the tip is going to be won by the Nick 10 girls. We're playing under college rules here tonight. 30 second shot clock, 10 minute quarters. Both teams sporting around 10 players each as the first shot is no good and a rebound underneath by the area girls. Let's see what they've got on tap here for offense, Tyler. Nice screen up top. Drives in the lane, and the first bucket no good. Rebound underneath. Kicks out. Free throw line jumper is good. I think that was Banks playing for Lutheran this season. As the area girls have a 2-0 lead, 40 seconds into tonight's ball game. 
Tyler, you know, this is not a team event, so to speak. You're playing with a lot of people that you maybe have played some tournaments, perhaps, maybe in some middle school games. But, you know, for a game like this where you're playing with a bunch of unknown players, you're really going to get a lot of ball movement as there we have a shot clock violation. So you're going to see a lot of ball movement, a lot of ball screens, not a lot of set plays coming forth here tonight. Yeah, and uh, I know we were talking before the broadcast, uh, but really it's just one practice that these players have had together. Um, so like you said, a lot of screens, even the unfamiliarness with the shot clock, because um, in high school we don't have the shot clock, so uh, that may play a factor. So there was an issue. The shot clock did not restart following the turnover that shot clock violation committed. So a bit of a slow start here, as you kind of expect, you know with the all-star rosters here, but I think we're gonna see a lot of offense as the evening progresses. Good pass down low, unable to be handled that time. Morgan came in a little bit too hot off her hand, so it'll be Nick 10 basketball. Here's Johnston coming up the floor. She played for Hananiga. Hananiga, of course, had the undefeated regular season, another great season for the Indians as they continue their dominance in the Nick 10. As there's a nice jumper that time by Taylor Paulson as she evens it up here two minutes into the ball game. A very smooth stroke fr from Paulson right there. Found space, took her chance. Sullivan carrying the ball up court early for the area girls. Of course, she is 6'3", plays more as a guard using that size to her advantage. She's got that left-handed shot, so that's something to be watching out for if you're playing defense against her this evening. Nice pass down low, corralled underneath the shot, no good. And Tyler, as you mentioned, the shot clock, a bit of an unfamiliar foe as Morgan could not hit Rin that time. It's already two of those here in the first quarter. Yeah, and both teams obviously succumbing to it, so uh, it's not like it matters. Ooh, has a block going up for a shot right there, shot blocked. Like you're saying, both teams affected by it, so. Uh, We'll see if maybe the pace picks up because of it. Yeah, we definitely expect that. Of course, all these girls, both proficient at offense as well as defense. But sometimes in these all-star games, you know, yeah, your defensive intensity might not be quite as high. So I'm sure we're going to see a lot of buckets here as we progress throughout the evening. Good find in the corner. Good look. No good by Paulson. As here come the area girls across half court. Like Nick 10 and the area girls both playing man to man defense here early in the game. Dribble picked up. Here's a drive inside that time by Morgan. As now the area girls reset. Step back jumper is a little bit too long that time by Sullivan. Battle underneath can't be saved. Morgan couldn't quite hang on to that one. It'll be a turnover as we're going to have a couple of substitutions here for the area girls. As we're kind of waiting. Just like to say just how impressed of, with the court I am. Checkerboard pattern with the wood grains. Absolutely beautiful court we're playing on tonight. With both teams, the girls and boys for the Rock Valley Golden Eagles had successful seasons. Rock Valley, of course, had that 34-game winning streak undefeated in the regular season and a successful season for the boys' side as well, 22-10 and 10 on the year as we have a traveling violation here for the Nick 10 girls. Sullivan guarded up top by Johnston. She goes left, hard screen that time. Looks like she got that screen from Maya Jansen. Jansen was very impressive when we saw her against Byron. That was a very exciting game, perhaps the best game of the season, Tyler, if you remember that one early in the season between the Tigers and the Cardinals. Fortunately for the Cardinals, they fell, but a very entertaining game it was as we're going to have a substitution here. Yeah, it was quite the back and forth game, if I recall. Uh, exciting, especially to start off uh, our coverage of the season back then. Here is Denia Gary. She brings the ball across half court. Takes it over to Johnson, back to Gary. Sparza up top. She lines up a three. This one no good, a little bit too short. The player of the year in the Nick 10. And as we mentioned at the top, one of the girls going into Division I next year. As the three ball is good for Gary. So just looking at the roster, of course, we got a lot of talent 
the Nick 10 by themselves, they've got six first-team all-conference players as well as three out of the four alternates here on the floor this evening. So it's going to be tough. You know, the Nick 10 has had a bit of an advantage in this series throughout the years, but uh, some very good talent going the other way as well as it's a 2-5 to five ball game in favor of the area girls as here's another three. This one no good. Rebound underneath by Jansen. Sullivan across half court. Now the screen here, she goes left, picks up her dribble, kicks it out to the corner. This is Drew with the ball inside to Jansen. Jansen with a nice turnaround jumper off the glass and in. That was a fantastic pass as well. Yeah, one of the things that really separates some of the top level teams from the teams that uh, don't typically come out in the higher portion of the conference, those ability to make entry passes, the simple passes, you know, Speaks to good fundamentals as there's a shot is missed and taken by the area girls across half court. Drew finds Malentine up top. Now back over to Sullivan. Sullivan driving. Bit of a miscommunication right there, but the ball retained by the area girls. Here is Drew trying to go left. Shut down very nicely by Gary. Now Malentine and they have to reset up top. Three seconds on the shot clock. One more, and this shot no good. A another shot clock violation. Now they're going to say they're going to play on. Thought they might have called it, but it'll be a turnover regardless. Pretty slow pace here tonight. Five to four is the score. As this shot no good. Rebound by the area girls. About six minutes down. Tyler, just not a lot of cohesiveness on offense. Yeah, I think it's a lot of just getting to know each other's play style. I, you know, as the shot is up and miss. Rebound underneath and put back in by Drew. Go ahead, Tyler. As like, you know, throughout the season, you have an entire off season to work with your teammates and then the entire season to get familiar. And uh, that's kind of what, you know, the difference between this and, you know, a game in February is uh, just that familiarity. Yeah, it's always easier to run your offense when you know your teammates are going to be in the positions you're expecting. Good open shot that time by, that was Robinson. She could not hit it. And a fantastic down court pass to Jansen. Jansen bothered underneath that time. Good defense in transition by Robinson. As she gets the ball, drives in, steps around, and that ball up and under the basket. Thought they might have called, but they are going to let them play on. Didn't quite break the cylinder. Here is a good pass inside to Sullivan as she has fouled hard. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot two, our first free throws of the evening. And this is really where, I mean, we said it all season, this is, can be where games are won and lost. Uh, and especially this slow pace of offense so far, uh, these free throws are going to be key. Sullivan at the line representing Orangeville. And a left-handed shot. First one up and good. And the area girls up 7-5 to five here. 2.32 left to play in the first quarter. Well, it's been a bit of a slower-paced game than we were anticipating. Hoping to see some of the action go a little bit quicker. It's a nice rebound that time off the miss by Blackman. Blackman for Jefferson this season. Ball finds its way into the corner. Now back up top. Harder with the drive. And they're going to say last touch by the area girls, so it'll stay with the Nick 10 girls underneath. Tyler, just looking at the makeup of this Nick 10 girls roster. Of course, you see three purple jerseys, three green jerseys, the two best teams in conference, well represented, the Indians and the Titans here tonight. And those were pretty much the two most dominant teams this season. Uh, we were there when they played against each other towards the end of the season, and uh, that was quite the game, but uh, just shows the amount of talent that both teams had. Nice move in the post that time. That is Caitlin Park out of Rockford Christian. The Royal Lions finishing fifth in conference with a five and four record this season. As this one not turned over, now here is the Nick 10. This is Patalber. Gives it over to Harder. 
And we're going to once again have a tipped ball out of bounds. It'll stay here. That pass right there, most likely you get away with it uh, during the regular season. However, this All-Star game, uh, people tend to be a little bit quick, a little bit faster. Pass up top. Here are the Nick 10 girls. Pass from Indian to Indian. Now back over to Harder. Harder looking as the area girls are going to get another turnover, a shot clock violation again. Now, Tyler, we've seen it a couple times. You know, I'm sure that's going to be, once we hit the, the mid-quarter break, that's going to be a big point of emphasis. You know, we're used to seeing some of the offense move a little slow as there's a nice pass underneath. Couldn't finish that time, Drew. As here is Nick 10 with the basketball. Trailing five to nine, a three lined up, no good. A good look at the basket by Patalber. As here are the area girls pushing it once again. A triple for the area girls, no good. Hannah Morgan had a shot wide open. As here's Patalber, thought she might have traveled, no call. Picks up her dribble, can't keep the pivot foot. Bonnie's on the floor, but the area girls will come away with it. Got a four point lead, 30 seconds left to go. Good down court pass, but uh, Jansen cannot retain. A little bit too high that time. And like we mentioned, the shot clock uh, rule that they're playing under. We mentioned that with about a minute left, most likely during the regular season. That's just a one possession uh, time frame right there, whereas now we're on possession four, I think. Patalber's shot was blocked by Jansen. Ten seconds left to go in the quarter. I see a wide open three for Morgan and just short. So after one, it is 9-5 in favor of the area girls. We'll take a quick break. You're watching high school basketball here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! And we are back here at Rock Valley College in Rockford, Illinois, where we are at the 25th annual Rising All-Star Classic here between the area girls and the Nick 10 girls. And the area girls made up of the Big Northern and NUIC conferences. They hold a four-point lead, 9-5, to five, as we start the second quarter. Area girls in white. The Nick 10 girls in the colored jerseys as another nice move by Jansen as she finishes off the glass with her left hand again. Tyler, you know, we've seen a couple of players make some shots, but so far in this first half of action, Jansen looks like the best player on the court. Yeah, and she's keeping it simple. She's saying down low and... Yeah, so there we have an and one finish through contact. And like I, like I was saying, uh, she's finishing her shots on underneath the basket. This is Jeliah Young. I think we had her number mixed up, but Jeliah Young for Freeport is at the line. She's got an opportunity. As there we see Jansen walking off. Looks like she might have got hit hard, favoring that left leg just a touch. Hopefully she is okay. Definitely want to play it safe here in this All-Star game. Don't want to see anybody come out of it with an injury, especially to the lower body. Right, and a lot of these girls, I'm sure, are playing spring sports. Uh, so you don't necessarily want to let an all-star game ruin your spring season. Here's Sullivan with some speed. She lines up a triple. Good shot, no good. She's pining for a foul call that time. Thought she got hit on the follow-up by Young. 
No call, however. Here is Young. Young drives in, left hand, left footed step. Try to Euro through there. Good defense underneath in the post by the area girls. Some fancy dribble movement. As here is Sullivan as she is going to get fouled going to the basket. Looks like they're uh, playing hard against each other. Sullivan and Young from Freeport and Orangeville. As Young's going to check out of the game, we'll have Esparza coming back in for the Nick 10 girls. Quick three ball is up, no good. Rebound underneath that time by Robinson. Robinson keeping her eyes up as she goes down the court. Three ball is down. Alanya Patalber puts it in, and just like that, Nick 10 is within a point. Minute and a half down here in the second quarter. Great drive right there. Rebound underneath. Can't quite put it in. Park had it. Good shot as she was battling underneath. Bit of a high pass, able to be corralled by Robinson. Gets it to the free throw line as there is Esparza as the Nick 10 girls take the lead 12 to 11 here. Eight minutes to go in the second. The shot taken probably from Esparza's favorite spot on the court right there, the elbows. She's got some height as well as the two all-star studs go at it that time. Sullivan gets the upper hand on that drive as she just went through the body of Esparza and put the ball in the hoop. Here's a three ball. That one's going to be blocked on the perimeter. Great defense. Sullivan goes down court. Banks thought about a three ball and another basket for the area girls. As Banks puts it in, area girls up 15 to 12. Sparza tries to tie it up. That went a little bit too long. It'll go out of bounds. as the area girls will take over possession. Yeah, and this part is not necessarily known for her three-point ability. Um, I know during the season, her coach tended to like her right there, uh, controlling the paint. So uh, just exploring what else is out there, I guess. A little bit tougher here in this all-star game. You go in there looking at Sullivan, who is listed at 6'3", the tallest player on the court this evening on the girls' side as those two are matched up. Now they get switched off. A quick trigger that time, but a rebound underneath by Sullivan, and she is going to finish through contact as Whitney Sullivan once again really taking over this game here in the past couple of minutes. Tyler running the offense and scoring some points, but uh, she is a handful out there on defense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard to guard against height. Um, that, that's just plain and simple. Really, the only person who can match up against her is Esparza, and I uh, can't play her the entire game. So, You say height's hard to guard against, but height combined with skill makes you a lethal combination out there on the hard court. Playing more of that uh, point forward, point center position that we have seen in the modern day of basketball. Here's a triple lined up. Good look at it. No good, however, was harder as here are the area girls running the fast break. They've got a two on three, and a nice play finishing through contact. Caitlin Park for Rockford Christian once again, as the area girls on a bit of a run here in this second quarter, as finally the answer by Allison Neilfelt brings this back within five. A dangerous pass as there was some miscommunication. Here is Esparza. Esparza with an open run to the hoop, kicks it out. Good shot, fake, good look at the basket, and another three by Allison Neufeld, two in a row that time. And just like that, the Nick 10 girls back within two. That was uh, quite the fake step over three right there. Very nice. Here's Jansen. Jansen shot a little bit too short, taken away by, that's Harder. Harder across half court, finds her Titan teammate in Patalber. Patalber, no good that time, but an open rebound can't quite finish. Neil Felt had it. Perhaps she was expecting some contact. Sometimes you're a little bit too open on the shot. Here's Esparza on the run out. They've got a five on two. She's got players on the perimeter, decides to go right at Sullivan. Good defense that time by Sullivan. She can't finish through contact. 
And now Sullivan running the court, really putting on a showcase of effort here in this second quarter. As the handoff is tipped away and taken by Sullivan up top. Get the screen, now passes it down low. And we're going to have a foul called. No shot. It'll stay here. Yeah, the, f the game has definitely opened up uh, coming back from the first quarter. I believe we had a combined 14 points between the two teams. And uh, already we're, we've surpassed that. So yeah, definitely a quicker pace here in the second. <laughs> Has another nice finish through contact. Sullivan with a couple more points here. The area girls lead 22 to 18, four and a half to go in the second quarter. Nice cross court pass, another three, and another May Kaylee harder this time. That's been the Nick 10 spot. They've made three threes in the last couple of minutes right from that spot on the court as they pull within one. And they missed quite a few, but uh, they're staying in it because of the three ball. Oh, wow. Just absolutely bullying her defender, Caitlin Park, able to use her size to back down Gary. As another three is good. Jordan Johnston this time. And we are all knotted up. Tyler, the Nick 10 girls on a scorcher. I think they've made four out of their last five three balls. And they have tied it up here halfway through the second. As Park responds in kind. Anything you can do, I can do as well. Parker had a nice post shot, and then she comes back down the very next possession, drills a triple, and the area girls back with a three-point lead. Pass tipped away, taken by the area girls. Sullivan has it, moving a little bit slower here now. Across half court, she is guarded up top by Johnston. Trying to get a screen, she gets some space, and the bank is open. Cashing those checks. A three ball by Sullivan off the glass. A quick response, no good, however, for the Nick 10 girls. And we're going to have our first timeout of the game. As we'll take a brief break here on Clutch Sports Media. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. And we are back here at Rock Valley College where we are watching the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic. The area girls hold a six point lead, 30 to 24 is the score. Here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. Seen a lot of offense here in this second quarter as the game's pace has really picked up. Here are the area girls. As this drive is shut off that time. Ball in the corner. Pass down low to Jansen. Jansen with the turnaround jump shot. No good. Here's Paulson across half court. Some nice dribble moves. Tries to get the pass down low to Gary. No good. And good transition defense that time by the Nick 10 girls forcing the offense to reset. Drive in off the left foot. No good. Morgan with that shot. Another tip pass, but Gary has it. She kicks it to the corner. This one up and no good. A little bit too long by Robinson. And a good strong rebound that time by Morgan. Melentine, career leader in three points at Pagatonica, carrying the ball up court. She is hounded very closely. No call. Officials really letting them play. It's about as physical as we've seen the game here tonight. We're going to have a foul away from the play. No shot. They'll keep it down here. And that's the one thing I mentioned. We, they won't have one practice, so inbound plays. Uh, is it just going to be a free-for-all, just everyone setting screens for everyone? 
Yeah, a little bit of confusion it looks like, but a good find underneath, and Morgan puts it up and in. An eight-point lead, the biggest that we've seen all evening for the area girls. Ball finds its way over in the corner a little bit too long. Johnston couldn't connect. They're going to say a last touch by the Nick 10, so it'll go over to the area girls. A quick substitution as Caitlin Park comes back in for Morgan. Here is Malentine. About a minute and a half left to play here in the second quarter. Good pass underneath and can't quite finish. Park had a good look at it. Good pass in transition and Blackman with her first points of the evening. That's how you run, you know. Tyler, some of the set plays are a little bit difficult, but transition basketball stays the same whatever level you're at. You want to stay in your lanes. If you're open, somebody will find you. And just like that, she put it in. Try to go with the slip pass that time as we've got some bodies on the floor. Good effort here. Despite the All-Star game, you really like these girls playing hard out there. Yeah, like you mentioned, staying in your lane, just kind of trusting everyone. I, I know they haven't been together too long, but uh, great sign of trust right there. Yeah, basketball instincts sometimes just take over as here's a three by Johnston and she connects. Another three here in the second quarter. And the reason that the Nick 10 girls have been able to stay in this ball game haven't had much success down low, but from the perimeter, they have been scalding hot here in the second. 30 seconds left to go here, a couple times for a few more possessions by either team. Here is Park, almost looked like she was going to pull that shot, and this one's going to be blocked away by Blackman. Here is Gary running the court as she gets fouled, and we're going to have a couple of free throws. Tyler Gary with an opportunity to bring this game back within one. 32 to 29 is the tally here. 17 and a half left to play in the second. She sinks both of these here. One point game. As first one is a little bit off. Still an opportunity. It's one possession game, but you love to cut it down as much as you can. As she goes one for two, making the second. And we're going to have a brief timeout, 30-second timeout. So we'll take a quick break here. You're watching Flush Sports Media. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And welcome back here to Rock Valley College where it is the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic 17 and a half seconds left to go in the second quarter. The area girls hold a two-point lead, 32-20, here on Clutch Sports Media, presented by the Rockford Lightning. Tyler, you mentioned it a little bit ago. It was 10 to 5 at the end of the first, now 32-30. We'll see if there is any play set up here for the area girls before halftime as they want to extend their lead. Full court pressure here by the Nick 10 girls as this one is going to be, how we're gonna say, a foul called that time. Robinson with some active hands, so it'll be out of bounds, 6.6 .6 on the clock. A lot of time wasted, and uh, I, I would say mission accomplished coming out of this time out there uh, for the Nick 10 girls. Six and a half, this one is thrown underneath. It is going to be on the floor. And we're not going to have a shot attempt. So at the end of the first half, area girls on top, 32 to 30. We've seen some exciting basketball. Tyler, who is the standout player of that half from your perspective? 
Uh, for me, it'd probably be Sullivan uh, from Orangeville. She dominated, like you said, that point forward, point center position, just uh, coming up court with the ball. Uh, she made plenty of shots. When she went to the line, she made her shots there as well. So very impressed by her. And for the Nick 10 girls, you know, it was a lot of three-point basketball that has kept them in this ball game. So Neil Felt hit a couple back-to-back, -back, but uh, just about everybody had an opportunity at the basket there in that second quarter. And without those, they would be in a much more dire situation. As it stands, it's a two-point game going into halftime. Be sure to stick around. Come back at halftime where we'll talk to head coach Daryl Watkins for the Rock Valley Girls Golden Eagle squad to get his insights on what we've seen tonight and how they progress throughout their season. You're watching High School Basketball here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Seiler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes at D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to play football in college. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1. Brian Batcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game.
gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to play football in college. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1. Brian Batcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to play football in college. How can you get 1% better today? 
just meet the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with that dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we were doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to real. And we are back here at the end of halftime where the area girls are on top of the Nick 10 girls, 32 to 30. We saw some explosive perimeter shooting by the Nick 10 girls carry them to a two point deficit as it looks like the area girls were gonna carry a big lead in the halftime and have a foul underneath as Sparza hacked on the way up. She's got an opportunity to tie this ball game up with a couple of free throws. Seen a bit of a disparity between the two teams here this evening as the area girls have really used the interior game as Esparza puts up the first of the two shots. We've seen the area girls really take advantage of the interior game. This ball game is tied, whereas the Nick 10 girls have really used the perimeter shooting to their advantage. And just like that, coming out of halftime, it is a tie ball game, 32 all. As we're gonna have a block underneath, another one swatted away. As the Nick 10 girls, a nice down court pass to Esparza, who stops on a dime, puts it up and in. A very strong put back for Esparza. Here are the area girls bringing the ball up the court. Is Malentine. She hands it off to Sullivan. Sullivan kicks it out. Park drives in. That one's going to be swatted away that time by Taylor Paulson. Paulson, a very impressive player and one of the many players on this team that was all conference. Made the first team this year alongside six of her teammates here in this ball game. That's not even including the honorable mentions as we're going to have a foul away from the ball. Let's stay here. Area girls trying to get on the scoreboard here in the third quarter. Nick 10 has opened up a 4-0 scoring run through the first minute 15 in the third. Good inside pass, and this one's going to be stolen away by Johnston. Looking to run the court, but instead pulls up. Another down court pass, as this one is going to be last touched this time. Getting the call on the court that time. So it'll stay here with the area, excuse me, with the Nick 10 girls. As they will run their inbound set. Here is a three ball lined up for Paulson. No good. Rebound taken away by the area girls. Here's a drive inside by Sullivan. She uses Morgan and we're gonna have a jump ball. This gives us a great opportunity to welcome in the booth head coach Daryl Watkins, the Rock Valley girls head coach. Daryl, you had a great season this year, 34 and two on the season. Thank you so much for joining us and here thank tonight. Thank you, thank you for having me on. We've got a low scoring start to this third quarter. Daryl, we were talking about it a little bit coming back from half, but it seems like a bit of a difference in offense as that one is no good. Mm -hmm. Area girls really using that interior game. Nick 10 girls using that perimeter shooting. They've made a lot of threes here. Mm -hmm. It's a very exciting you know, kind of dichotomy here on the basketball floor tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, you kind of got that. Like you said, you got the size with the area girls, and they're they're working it in. They're they're playing to their strengths right now where, where the Nick 10 is going to try to play a little fast and get up and down, play with some tempo, and, and get some threes up here. You know, and that's kind of how they got back into the game. That's kind of how they got their lead now. And, you know, it's kind of an exciting game. Uh, 
it's kind of how things are kind of transitioning to at the even at the college level now you know you're a little bit of fast pace um, and it's kind of exciting to see these girls you know get up and down on this college court here and be able to uh, like I said showcase their talents as, as, as they're getting ready to move on to their uh, respective four-year schools. There's a couple of misses at a time taken by Sylvan. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, a little bit of a higher pace, a lot more perimeter shooting. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you, like uh, many of us throughout the country, watched a lot of Iowa's games, you know, that Caitlin Clark effect. Yep. And you can definitely see that the game has evolved even, you know, since 25 years ago when the Rising All-Star Challenge was uh, put into place yes. in the 25, 25th annual as a three ball no good that time. Uh, you, can, you can definitely see it. You know, I remember uh, graduating college about mm -hmm. 10 years ago. Yep. You know, even the even the boys' game was a little bit slower, a lot more interior. You know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Even, like you said, the games games definitely evolving now. Uh, more emphasis on the three point shot. More emphasis on transition scoring. Uh, there's more emphasis on scoring in general. You know, you still get you still get your defensive teams that get to sit down and lock in, but it's a lot more emphasis put on the scoring side of things in the game, and and you're starting to see that a little bit now. It's starting to trickle down to the high school levels, um, even to the lower levels and the elementary side of things, where you're seeing tempo. You're seeing seeing a lot more three point shots being put up. You're seeing a lot more trans transition uh transition basketball as you are right there um you know and that's kind of kind of what the game is kind of getting to now uh that's how we play here at rock valley we we get up and down and um you know it's it's, it's a really fun brand of basketball especially you know when the people in the community get a chance to come out and see it speaking of your golden eagles as i mentioned a 34 and 2 record this season one of the best teams in the conference in the division in the nation you know we we We've seen a lot of these girls here tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, we've, you've got a couple of them from the area. Mm -hmm. We're excited to see, uh, you know, wherever they go to play at the next level, it's mm -hmm. always a great opportunity. But uh, especially for people in the area, you know, it's really good to keep some of that talent at home here yeah. at Rock Valley. Oh, for sure. You know, um, we get out, we do a good job of hitting, hitting the community, trying to get some of, you know, that, that, that top talent to stay here and stay in Rockford. Um, and then, you know, what we can't get from here, we, we go out and we get it from uh, from outside the area and outside of the district. And it, it's, been, it's been good for us. Uh, you know, the local town has been good for us and hopefully it's going to continue being good as, you know, we got a couple signees playing in this game. They hit a, both of them hit a few threes earlier on in the game from both sides. One's on the area team, Hannah, Hannah Morgan, uh, Rockford Lutheran kid. And then uh, we got Kaylee, Kaylee Harder on Boylan that's uh, – that's going to be with us next year as well, too. So just trying to keep building, keep trying to get stronger, and, and like you said, try to make another run at it next year as well, too. Yeah, we were looking at some of these statistics pregame. Of course, one of your outstanding freshmen this year, Maya Moore, freshman, made the second team All-American. You know, it's obviously it, at college level, you're expecting your upperclassmen to really lead the charge, but whenever you can have a player like that, an underclassman really come in and put out a great season as she did, you know, that's a, that's a great foundational building block that uh, you know, you're going to hope to build on and continue your, your success in years to come. Yes, for sure. Well, she came in and, and, and Mia was able to, able to learn from our sophomore group. We, we had nine sophomores this year. Um, they had a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. They were ready to play right from the start. Um, and they, they led the charge for us. And, and, you know, Mia had had no choice, as I say, to, to <laughs> kind of fall in line with what those sophomores' goals were. Um, and she had a great year. Uh, she stepped out. She, she did some things. You know, again, like you said, she's a freshman. So she's coming into an uncomfortable environment. Um, she's coming into the unknown, you know, trying to get her feet wet, trying to learn the game at this pace, at this level. And she had an amazing year. Um, you know, averaged 15 points for us, uh, five rebounds two and a half steals two and a half assists um, you know scored just over 500 points this year as a true freshman and and for her to be able to you know be named as a second team all-american at the at the at the junior college ranks and and then even she had another honor as well too she was a WBCA uh, all-American uh, honorable mention and that's all levels of junior college not just the division two side so you know she was an honorable mention kid there um, so one of the top 20 in our division and then one of the top 20 in the country no matter what that's that was big for her um, and we're looking at her building off of that and you know kind of coming in and like we said we got some more freshmen uh, coming in next year a couple of them playing in this game uh, some ones from out of district and then we got some transfers possibly coming in as well too that hopefully you know we can we can, you know, take care of th take care of business and, and just continue that good culture that we got built here. Yeah, speaking of some of the players in this game, you know, we've seen a little bit of a slow start in that first quarter. Mm -hmm. Seems like maybe not quite as familiar with the shot clock rules. Of course, playing under college rules here this evening. Mm -hmm. Saw a couple of uh, turnovers based on the shot clock violation. 
But especially in that second quarter, things really seemed to pick up. The girls really seemed to adapt to the game. What, what have you liked about uh, both sides here this evening? Uh, I like how they're, like you said, adjusting. You know, there's, there's been – they don't play with the shot clock normally. So, you know, there were a few turnovers early. And, and you see that with a lot of freshmen. You see that, they, that that adjustment period is a little different, just the pace of the game, the speed of the game, the, little, the physicality of the game. Um, you know, they're being able to see that now. The, the length of the court is the biggest one. You know, they're, they're out here and, you know, they're getting up and down. And they're, you can tell they're a little gassed, they're a little winded. But, you know, that's a part of that transition style as they're moving on. Now, score is 38 to 36 in favor of the area girls. As here's a three ball. It's time no good, and it'll be taken away from the area girls. The one other thing that, uh, you know, we've kind of looked at throughout this game as we see a nice pass down low is uh, some of the great passing, especially those entry passes. You know, sometimes when you see at the middle school, high school level, you know, not all your players are really comfortable dropping that pass down. You know, you, sometimes you go over the top of the defender. Sometimes you bounce it in there into the post. But really, I've been impressed by pretty much everybody's willingness and ability to really drop that pass down into the post. That's, that's been really something that uh, I, I've seen here this evening. It, it's been very impressive to watch. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they got to have their eyes up and being able to see that. That's kind of a lost art now, uh, kids being able to make post-entry passes. <laughs> uh, we teach it. We, 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 we put an emphasis on it. And, and it's, it's actually nice to see certain kids be able to make that pass because, again, that's a lost art now. And you even saw that at the Division One level up there, you know, at the highest level. That's a, that's a lost art. I mean, you know, there's still some true back-to-the-basket post players out there. There's still some rim running post players out there. And you got to be able to find them. you got to be able to make those looks for them. 40 to 38 is the tally here with 2.20 to go. Again, we're being joined by head coach Daryl Watkins, coaches the Rock Valley Golden Eagles girls side. Great season for them this season. As this one's going to be tied up by Jansen, she puts it in. One of the best players in that big northern conference is Maya Jansen, uses her size and length effectively. You know, Daryl, you, you mentioned the length of the court. Now, this is really a bit of a different environment as we have a turnover. No, it'll stay here, rather. But uh, you mentioned some of these girls might be a little winded. You know, it's a, definitely a different pace to the game. But uh, those extra feet really add up. I'm going to be curious to see what goes on here in this fourth quarter as we get towards the end of the game. Who is going to stand out? Who keeps their breath? Who keeps their legs underneath them? And who can really put this game away as we're tied with a minute 45 left to go? Oh, yeah. It's uh like you said, it's a, it's a different environment. You know, the backdrop's different. None of them get this look on any of their home courts at home, on away court. They don't really get in unless they make a, a you know, a, a super sectional push or, or a downstate push. And, and, you know, just the, the extended extra 10 feet of the court, you know, is a little different as well, too. You know, just like you said, just that extra extra stride that they got to put in to be able to, to keep pace and get up and down the court here. A minute and a half left here in the third quarter as the area girls look to retake the lead here on this possession. As this one is held up top by Morgan, now gets it back over. This is Malentine. She tries a three, no good, and it's going to be rebounded underneath that time by Neilfelt. Buzzer went, but the shot clock did reset, so no turnover. Got a minute left here in the quarter. Three ball lined up, and this one just a little bit short by Neil Felt. And some fancy behind the back dribbling here. 55 seconds left to go. So a nice drive and a finish through contact that time by Lauren Malentine. It's 42 to 40 with 45 seconds left to go here in the quarter. This one able to be maintained by the Nick 10 girls. As here is Harder in the corner. She picks it back up top. And this one's going to be tipped away, stolen in transition. Got a one on two, but a no, couldn't finish through contact, but we're going to have a push from behind. So, Daryl, for people that might be a little bit more unfamiliar with the Rock Valley squad, what can we expect out of them uh, next year coming off that, you know, very incredible season that you guys had? Well, hopefully we can, you know, do a little bit of the same. You know, obviously this was a historic season. Um, first regular undefeated season for a program, um, for our women's basketball program in history of, of, the, of the school. Um, you know, ended up going, winning our first 34 games. And, you know, that's going to be tough to match, you know, as far as when it comes from a winning standpoint, from a, you know, win game standpoint. But hopefully, you know, uh, we've built up a culture here. 
um, and the kids that we recruit, they, they buy into that culture, they, they fit into our culture, um, and hopefully, you know, we can keep those things rolling and keep, 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 you know, keep this vibe going that we have going on here. Um, you know, it's still going to be fast paced. We're still going to get up and down the court. We're still going to play within transition. We're still going to shoot our threes, um, you know, so that's going to stay the same. But, you know, like I said, it's going to be some new faces and hopefully we can get some kids that are going to be able to, like I said, continue just buying into our culture. And a stoppage here, about a minute, or excuse me, a second and a half left on the game clock. 42-240 is the tally. Area girls on top of a lower scoring quarter than the second. See if that picks up in the fourth. As this one's going to be inbounded, and no shot is had. So at the end of three, area girls on top, 42-240. Daryl, thank you so much for joining us here. The 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic. It's been a good one. We're excited for the finish. All righty. Thank you. Thank you so much. All righty. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. And we are back live here at Rock Valley College where the area girls lead the Nick 10 girls by a score of 42 to 40. Here on Clutch Sports Media, Trevor Larson, Tyler Fowler on the call. We were just joined a moment ago by girls head coach, Daryl Watkins. Of course, the Golden Eagles had an undefeated regular season. Not so uncommon around these parts as the Hananiga Indians did the same at the high school level. As here's a three ball up and it is good. Alanya Patalber opens up the scoring here as Nick Ten is just like that back out in the lead. So Tyler, that third quarter, I mentioned it a little bit slower pace, not so much offense. But uh, we got a close game right now. One point lead for the Nick Ten girls. We should expect to see a very exciting finish as Sullivan goes up and through contact, she puts it up and one opportunity. That was uh, an incredible finish while getting fouled right there by Sullivan. Uh, let's see if she can make it here, make it a two point game. Sullivan up a little bit too strong that time. Here are the Nick 10 girls. Taylor Paulson gives it over to Olivia Robinson. Patalber lines up another one. No good. Had a good look at the basket. Rebound taken by Park. As she'll get it over to Drew. Drew trying to take her defender off the dribble. Passes it down low. Good find in the post. As Maya Jansen finishes up and through the contact. As the area girls have a three-point lead. All right, talking about second quarter is already at a quicker pace than the third. And this one just ripped away underneath that time by Jansen. As Tyler, we were talking about with head coach Daryl Watkins, you know, the college floor 10 feet longer than the high school floor. So it's really going to be a question of who can keep their energy up as we move on throughout the fourth quarter as this is a close game. So some of these girls might be running on adrenaline, running on fumes towards the end of it. This one no good, a good look, but a ball finds Patalber and she's got another one. All eight points in the quarter by Alanya Patalber as it's a one point game. Yeah, I mean, 10 feet, that's a big deal, especially for those post players who have to get down below the basket on both sides of the floor. Here is a drive inside, ball finds its way back out to Sullivan. She's gonna back down as Sparza picks up her dribble. Cross court pass over to Malentine. Malentine had a thought about it. Stead goes in, free throw line, jumper up and good. Lauren Malentine, one of the best perimeter shooters on the floor here this evening for either side. So here's Robinson, Robinson gets it over on the elbow to Esparza. Now ball finds its way back out to Neilfelt. 
Area girls employing that zone defense. Robinson knifes through, kicks it out. A three up and no good. Rebound taken away by Jansen. Sullivan slowing the pace down here. Is it across half court? Going toe to toe against Esparza. One of the best matchups that we've seen here this season. Two of the best girls in and around the area. Again, both going to play at the next level, Division One. Here they go in the battle. Sullivan is going to finish through contact. Fancy footwork by Whitney Sullivan as she stepped around. Esparza got bumped on the way up, and she's got an opportunity to convert an and one, her second free throw attempt of the quarter. And her ball handling skills right there were just absolutely incredible between the legs, behind the back, with a defender right on top of her. Incredible. Sullivan's free throw is up and it is good. It's a 49 to 45 lead. Seven minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. Here's Robinson over to Patalber. Patalber's had the hot hand this quarter. Back out to Esparza. Esparza is the player of the year in the Nick 10 this season. Over to Patalber, looking for her teammate underneath. Now finds in the corner. Esparza thought about the three. She's not going to take it, and she will be fouled underneath. Katie Drew got into her that time as she'll shoot two at the line. Uh, you see some of the players' hands on hips here as we have 6.36 left to go in this fourth quarter. You mentioned those feet really add up. You got to think around this time, maybe even a little bit earlier in that fourth quarter, is about the amount of running that these girls would expect to do in a regular season game on the high school courts. But, uh, just that 10-foot, you know, it, it really does add up, like you said. And let's not forget, for some of these ladies, they haven't played a basketball game in well over a month. So, there's a steal by Esparza. She's going to get fouled. No call, but she puts it up anyway, and it is tied 49 all. Like I was saying, you never know their conditioning. A nice passing break through the press that time by the area girls as Drew takes the lead here, 51 to 49. This one going to be tipped out of the air. Here's Drew down court, and Banks going to reset the offense. Finds an open teammate in the lane. Drew, that one in and out. Had a good look at it. Couldn't quite put it down. Quite unlucky right there. Quite unlucky bounce. Patalba wide open once again. The assist by Esparza. Alanya Patalba has 10 points in the corner. She has really led the charge in the fourth. Yeah, like you said, conditioning. Drew has walked about half of the court right there. Here is Morgan. Morgan trying to feed it into the post. This one will stay here. Last touched that time by Harder. Harder, of course, going to be playing on this court next year. Commit to the Rock Valley College Golden Eagles. I'm sure Coach Watkins is excited to have her. She's a quick player. She's got a lot of perimeter shooting ability out there on the court. Pass up top this time. And this one no good, but a rebound by Morgan. Morgan no good, and we're going to have a push that time by Robinson. Yes, indeed, they will say on Olivia Robinson. I'm keeping going on uh, just how tired. Let's not forget that just the amount of people on the bench for both sides, uh, not the normal number uh, they're used to. Yeah, the area girls, 18, or excuse me, eight players on their squad. The Nick 10 have 10. So the bench a little bit short here for both squads uh, compared to what they're used to. As this one's going to be stolen away by Harder and passed down to Gary. Gary finishes up with a left-handed move. And we're going to have a substitution here for the area girls as they want to bring back in. They're putting some size out on the court once again as they try to get back into this one, down three. Uh, they've had the advantage for most of the evening, but here in the fourth quarter, it's like the extra legs on the bench have really made a difference as we're going to have a three-point opportunity from the line as Denia Gary just got into the back of the shooter that time. 
Lauren Valentine will have an opportunity to tie this one up if she can sink all three. Three shots on the court here. First one up and good. Third of the way there to tie up the game. 4.49 left in this ball game here in the fourth quarter as Malentine sinks the second. A smooth stroke from the free throw line. Obviously, like you mentioned earlier, she has the all-time record at Pectonica for three-pointers made. And usually three-point ability translates very well to the free throw line as we are seeing right here as she is perfect that time. Didn't touch the rim on the first and third and we're tied up. Quickly down the court are the Nick 10 girls as this one is down. Kaylee Harder had some space, really ran the length of the court coming out of that free throw attempt. Nobody within a couple of feet of her that time and she sinks it to put the Nick 10 girls up by three once again. This one is Malentine, Malentine no good. Rebound taken away by Gary. Gary trying for some speed, now slows it up. She finds Robinson once again harder. Harder thought about shooting that one as the bench was really pined for her to throw that one up. Instead, Robinson knives through the defense. And the Nick 10 have a five point lead, the biggest of the second half for the Nick 10 girls. Here is Drew. Drew hands it off to Malentine in the corner. Malentine stops, pops, and down. Elbow jumper that time for Lauren Malentine. Brings the area girls back within three. Defense has to step up right here. Cause a turnover. Here's Robinson. Kicks it over to Gary. Gary trying to triple. A little short. Rebound underneath by Johnston. Kicks it back out over to Harder. Harder tries it again. This one no good. Rebound to area girls. Definitely some space open for the perimeter jump shooters if they want to take it. Here is Sullivan going through the defense. Just too big that time as she was fouled on the way through. Shot no good, but she'll have an opportunity to pull the area girls back within one. Yeah, and uh, if you're the area girls, you really want to uh, make sure you have someone back. Uh, so what happened the last time they attempt free throws doesn't happen again with that quick, easy three-point made shot from the Nick 10 girls. And we'll see if Harder really runs out on this next attempt as the first one is no good by Sullivan. Remains a three-point game, 319 left to play here in the fourth. And Harder's creeping back to that same spot. No one around her. Sullivan makes the second of two. So 59 to 57 is the score. Harder will check out for Esparza. Tonight, Gary seeing some extended play time here in the fourth quarter. Looks like she's got some of the freshest legs on the court. She's really been pushing the pace up and down the court as she's got an opportunity and she drills it. Denia Gary, the Guilford Viking, sinks another three for the Nick 10 girls as they now have a five point lead with three minutes left to go in the ball game. Sullivan tries to respond with a three of her own. This one off, rebound Gary. Gary with the nice ball handling, gets it down court to Paulson. Paulson stops and pops, no good. But a rebound by Sullivan. Throws it ahead, and this one a little bit too far. And she led it. It was Banks just a touch too much, and it goes out of bounds for the area girls. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally would have liked to see her attempt that pass earlier in that possession uh, because if you do overthrow it, you're kind of not leaving enough leeway for her to get an errant pass. Luckily, we are playing on the college court, so plenty of room on the baseline as here's Patalber. Patalber, no good, but a rebound by Gary. Her runner in the lane, no good as well. Couldn't quite corral her own rebound, but Esparza pulls it in. Back out to Gary. Cross-court pass over to Neil Felt. And now the Nick 10 girls reset their offense. Sparza passes it to Johnston. Johnston no good. Rebound taken away. There's Morgan underneath. Gives it to Sullivan. Sullivan running the court. Side steps up. No good. Fouled, however, by Jordan Johnston. She'll go back to the line. 
And Tyler, she's really got to start sinking these free throws if the area girls are going to win this game. That and uh, I think defensively, I mean, I think you're seeing the tiredness now for the area girls for sure. Uh, but whatever they have left, they have to give within these next two minutes here of game time. No good once again on the free throw by Sullivan. So a five-point game. Nick 10 on top, 62 to 57. A minute 54 left to play in this ball game as Sullivan hits the second. The lead is four points. We're going to have an exciting finish, I think, here tonight. Here is Patalber. Patalber looking to take her defender off the dribble. Now gets it down low to Esparza. Her fellow Titan kicks it out to Johnson. Johnson a little bit too long, but a rebound underneath by Neilfelt. And we're going to have a jump ball. Minute 32, possession arrow in favor of the area girls. And be sure to stick around here. We've got another game coming up at 7 o'clock where we're going to say the same. This time it'll be the boys, however, the Nick 10 and the area boys. This one's going to be blocked away, and Esparza has it. She throws it down court to Johnston. Johnston, an aggressive pass. This one's going to be taken away by Sullivan. Sullivan, the two-on-two, -two goes right at Esparza. No call. She gets it back, tries to throw it up again. This time, no call again. Could have gone either way both times, but Esparza able to keep her defensive positioning as we've got a four-point game. And with the shot clock, the Nick 10 girls can't just run out the clock like you would normally see in high school basketball. So uh, area girls are going to at least get a possession. We have a brief timeout. We'll step away. You're watching Nick 10 girls here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. And welcome back here to Girls High School Basketball where the Nick 10 is on top of the area. Girls All-Stars here at the 25th Annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic. A score of 62 to 58. Here on Clutch Sports Media, presented by the Rockford Lightning. 51 seconds left to go in this one. A four-point lead by the Nick 10 girls. We'll see how aggressive the area girl defense wants to be. One is Robinson. Robinson looking to drive the lane, bumps off her defender. And we're going to have a shot clock violation, so good defense that time. Don't think they quite realized they didn't have the full 30 coming out of the timeout. We've got 34.5 seconds left to go. An aggressive down court pass. Here's Morgan. Morgan out to the perimeter. This three ball is no good. And it's going to be out of bounds. Good look at the basket. But they couldn't quite sink it. So 27.1 on the clock. We'll see if they go for a trap or if they foul early. And indeed they will. Foul taken that time underneath. Let's say that one on... I believe that was Banks for the Lutheran. Yes, indeed, that foul on Kaylee Banks. 26 seconds left to play on the clock here in the fourth quarter. Robinson gets it, and she's going to be fouled very quickly once again by Drew. Walking the ball down court. It's going to be a one and one opportunity for Olivia Robinson. Olivia Robinson at the line. Shooting two. I'm going to say two, so there no one and one. It's just going to be two shots. First one up and good. Extends the lead to five points. 25.1 on the clock. Robinson's second shot is good as well. So we're going to see Lauren Malentine check back into the ball game. I want to get that perimeter shooting. 
And it's still a two possession game. As we're gonna have another brief timeout. 30. Brian Batcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. And we are back live here at 25.1 on the clock. Nick 10 out in front, 64 to 58. Pass inside to Sullivan. She kicks it out. This one is going to be a three ball, and it is down. Caitlin Park with a big time triple pulls it back to a one possession game. And we'll keep it right here as another timeout is called. Tyler, you know, we saw them take a couple of early fouls, the area girls, and I think that's going to be the plan again. But more than that, you would really love to get a trap, love to get a quick turnover, try to uh, tie this one up with a three pointer here as it's going right down to the end of it. Yeah, right now, time's your enemy. So uh, the more you have of it on the clock, the better your chances to pull off to come from behind win. And just like we were expecting here, this one has been a very competitive and high scoring game throughout. And you really, the 15 points in that first quarter, now you look at the score, 64 to 61. So after the end of the first, it has really been a high-powered offensive showing by both sides. We've seen a couple of runs by both teams. The area girls definitely had the advantage, I'd say around halfway through that third quarter. But once the perimeter jump shooting of the Nick 10 girls really started to take off, it has been their game ever since. But the three-pointer of that time down by the area girls made this a three-point game, so we should be in tune for an exciting finish. Yeah, I'd say it's almost tailed two different teams where one's kind of been reliant on the three, and the other one has been more uh, post-play. And, uh, you know, three is greater than two, so that's uh, why the Knicks 10 girls right now have that three-point lead. We'll see what the defensive and offensive sets are for these coaches. Again, coaching a lot of unfamiliar faces in that huddle. Inbounding play. This one's going to be thrown underneath to Esparza. She goes up. Can't make it. Gets her own rebound. Tries it again. Tries it again. And she is going to get the and one risky play. Tyler, she could have brought that one down after she missed the first. Instead, decides to go back up with it a couple of times. She is rewarded. And she has an opportunity to make this a six-point lead with a, a free throw right here. Yeah, and well, you know, it's, it's size. She's just able to out jump and outreach the opponent. Well, no good. Rebound by Drew. Drew trying to get a quick shot up over to Valentine. This one, no good. Rebound underneath. It is up. No good. And that will be it. So the Nick 10 girls ride a strong second half. They ultimately take down the area girls 66 to 61. Tyler, we saw a lot of impressive performances on both sides. But uh, if there was one player that really stood out to me here tonight, must have been Alanya Talber. She had a great third quarter, including eight straight points to start the frame. She was really lethal from outside here tonight. She was just able to get things going when her team was struggling. Uh, they fed her the ball a few times to really start big runs. So uh, I, I would agree with you, lethal from the outside and uh, uh, very, very hot with the ball in her hand. But all of the other, you know, it's a very exciting game, thrilling all around. Don't think we had a lead of more than eight, maybe 10 points throughout the entire evening. So a well-matched game despite the roster disadvantage for the area girls. Couldn't quite stay with them at the very end. 
couple of and one opportunities that the Nick 10 girls were able to convert on. Really, that's about the biggest difference in this one. But, uh, it was an exciting one overall. Be sure to stick around here. Got a couple of minutes, and we're going to start up another one. It'll be boys basketball, Nick 10 All-Stars versus area All-Stars tipping off around 7. For Tyler Fowler, I have been Trevor Larson. For the girls' 25th annual Rising Star All-Star Classic here at Rock Valley College. Again, be sure to stick around in about half an hour. We're going to tip off another game between the boys. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself, and then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1! Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. 
Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself, and then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1! Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret.
So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes at D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. 
Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 five-star training? Number one, it starts with a dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself, and then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1! Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes that D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret.
So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with that dynamic warm up. They getting our body in the position, in the place we need it, so that we can perform. Which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we are doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not... And welcome back here to the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic at Rock Valley College here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. Tyler, we had a great game with the girls. Now it's on to the boys. Same concept as last time. We've got the Nick 10 boys All-Stars made up of all the best players in the Nick 10. And we have got the area boys. Again, those same conferences. Let's go down to the PA announcer to hear the introductions for both squads. Rosters for tonight's ball game between the Nick 10 boys and the area boys. Tyler, we should have a great game on tap. 
And we talked about the girls game. We've seen many of these players as well here in our broadcasts this season. And we know that a lot of these guys have some talent that we're expecting to be we're expecting to be given a show here tonight. As again, they're going to be playing with college rules, two 20-minute halves. Yeah, and uh, like I said, two 20-minute halves, a little bit different than high school. I uh, saying the shot clock, just like the girls played with. So a uh, uh, few tweaks, a few changes, but uh, I'm sure the talent will uh, be in the spotlight tonight. And the Nick 10 boys in the white uniforms, different than last game. The area boys in the away jerseys. Bit of a color palette. Very exciting to see. Got a lot of colors on the bench there. As tip is going to be won by the area boys. As they will start off going left to right from our view up here in the broadcast. First left-handed shot by Soltau. No good. Here is Malachi Johnson, one of the best players in conference, knifing through the defense with great speed. And Tyler, they were really setting the tone early. A lot of speed on display here in just these first 25 seconds of gameplay. A little different than what we saw in the previous game. Uh, boys are just going straight for offense right now. As a three ball is up and good that time. Great shot to start off this one by Get a number for you in just a moment. That is Thomas Hero as the three ball no good by Malachi Johnson. Hero from Scales Mound. One of the conferences we don't have a ton of opportunities to cover as this one's going to be a foul. And he's going to the basket that time on the attempt was highly no good. Ivy looking to inbound the ball, throws it up, up top. Here is the drive. It's going to be stolen away by Cheney. Rock Cheney, the player of the year in the Nick 10, dishes it off to Malachi Johnson. Those two had some great battles here in the past couple years as Auburn and Guilford were on top of the conference. Of course, Guilford Vikings finish it off that undefeated season against the Auburn Knights. As here's Johnson. Oh, he is stuffed by the rim this time as the outlet pass is a nice tip. Trying to keep it, they cannot. Now here are the Nicktown boys. And Randy Johnson puts it in. Didn't throw it up that time. Just went with a nice finger roll. Played it safe, saw what Thrim did to his teammate previously. Sure, we'll see a couple of stuffs here in tonight's ball game. First one, however, no good. Great defense underneath that time as Haynes tried to get that one to go through the defense. It'll be a last touched by the Nick 10 boys, so it'll stay underneath. Brown was just there to meet the offensive player. This one inbounded up top to Hero. Taking his man off the dribble. Drops it off to Soltau in the corner. This is Jansen, Jansen. And we're going to have a shot clock violation. Saw that a couple times early in the game, in the girls' game. Not surprising that we see it as well. Bit of a different feel for these guys. I'm sure maybe some AAU ball or tournament play they might have played with a shot clock, but the majority of their high school careers, you know, they're playing without a shot clock, so it's definitely a bit of a different feel here on the court tonight. Here's Johnson, passes it out up top. Brown drives in, and he's got the nice push shot that time. Adam Brown, one of the key catalysts for the Belvedere North squad, who had one of the best seasons in school history, Tyler. He finished above 500 for just the second time and set a school record for wins as we're going to have a couple of shots at the line. Sold out going 4-2. Yeah, both Browns on the Nick 10 team from North or key components, and like you said, that record-breaking North squad for the school. So uh, interested to see what they can do with uh, the rest of the Nick 10 talent. Second free throw up and good for Soltau. So it is a five to six lead for the Nick 10 boys. So here's Chaney up top. He is gonna be guarded very closely into the corner. Brown once again, this one no good. Johnson tips the rebound away, but the area boys come up with it. 
Good ball work here by the area boys. A little bit too much speed at that time for Haynes as Johnson had some ideas about throwing that one down. Instead, the ball tipped away from behind. Out of transition ball as Johnson going to pick up the foul from behind. A little bit aggressive on defense. But Tyler, you can really tell that these guys want to get out. They want to run tonight. They want to put up some numbers on offense. Not only numbers, but they want to put up highlights as well, which I'm all for. A bit of a miscommunication here is Johnson this time. Just goes up with the right-handed layup. As we mentioned, some miscommunication possibilities as once again, here's Johnson from behind, takes a couple of steps. Almost started that one from outside the free throw line. It's a bit of a highlight, maybe a little bit underserved, but whenever you can start your two steps from around the free throw line and you finish off with a finger roll, you know that you've got some hops. Here's Harlow, excuse me, here's Hero. As he drills a three, as it is 10 to eight in favor of the area boys. Johnson underneath, he's guarded closely, drops it off, very nice pass to Adam Brown, cut it in there through the lane as he picks up two points. Here's Hively up top. Like the Nick 10 boys going to stay in that man-to-man -man defense. Loose ball. Hero picks it up. Can't finish through contact. He got hit by the body by Isaiah Huey. One of the more outstanding players we've seen. As we saw him on the football field these past two years and on the hard court. Getting that nod here. First team all-conference in two sports. Very impressive athlete Huey is. And... Uh, Checking out, bringing his other Hananiga Indian teammate, Cole Warren, in. Quite the dynamic duo Hananiga had. Bit of a line change, five in and five out for the Nick 10 boys. The second free throw by Hero is no good. Warren pulls it down, passes it off to Braden Brown, one of those Browns that we mentioned on Belvedere North. Warren drives in and he finishes a nice right-handed, almost looked like a modified hook shot that time as he had to change his arm angle to put that one down. Here's a three ball for the area boys, no good. Hero gets the rebound, he goes up left-handed and he cannot finish. Nick 10 boys in transition. One's handed off to Michael Jaleel Jones out to the perimeter, a three ball, no good that time. Good look at the basket. Dedrick Macon who had that shot. And stripped away this time. This one thrown ahead to Jaleel Jones. Shakes off his defender. Can't finish through contact. And Hively picks up the rebound. Quite the frantic pace both teams are playing right now. Foul underneath, so no basket. There's Trevor Jansen in the ball game for the area boys. Played out of Eastland. Could have a line change on the other side. There are 10 players on both sides. I think that makes for a lot of good matchups. See both coaches shifting all five in and all five out. We'll see if they play with some of those matchups as we go out through our, around the game. As here is Ryan Tucker, can't put it down. Tucker, of course, Tyler, we were there the night that he broke the school record for all-time points in a career. A most impressive player. And boy, I, I can remember that night like it was yesterday. He had like 30 some odd points in the first half of the ball game. We'll see if he can do something like that here tonight. Yeah, he's quite the impressive performance on that night. This one no good, and it's going to be kicked away. Stay here with the Nick 10 boys. Jaden Marion bringing the ball up court for the Nick 10. Played on Freeport Pretzels, gets a screen from his teammate, Macon. Free throw line jumper, a little bit too strong that time. Rebound taken away by Tucker. Eyes up for Tucker, throws it down court this time, and that one is going to be finally hauled in, and it goes down. Vontez Dent has an opportunity with the and one. Shooting one as he was able to finish up and through contact. I can see Dent being one of the more physical players tonight. Three points the old-fashioned way as the area boys pull within two. 
I remember Dent was one of the, he put out one of the highlights of the second ever broadcast we did here on Clutch Sports Media for basketball. As a quick three by Brown is no good. Uh, we had that great view, of course, in the lounge upstairs at Rockford Lutheran. Saw Dent come at us with that right-handed dunk. One of the, the cooler plays that we've had an opportunity to be a part of. A very different camera angle for basketball that you don't always get to see. Here's a quick trigger that time. Got the ball and threw it up there. Mason Peterson for Pecatonica. He drills the three as the area boys take the lead, but he gets the foul on the other end as Jaleel Jones will go to shoot two. Very close game so far, nearly seven minutes in. Hopefully this puts us in prime position for a, a close game at the very end. Yeah, we had a tightly contested one last game when the girls played. Like you mentioned, hopefully we see another one here tonight in the boys game. Something to watch out for to be really interesting with the 20 minute halves as opposed to the 10 minute quarters. You know, that's definitely gonna be, it definitely has a big effect, especially as you get down towards the end of the quarters. Here is a pass to Tucker. Tucker, open look at the basket that time, no good. Got a quick trigger, he'll let him fly from anywhere if he's got any space at all as he takes it away, leading a two on three as he gets down the court, finishes. Warren on the defense couldn't quite beat him down the court as Tucker puts up two more. Tucker's gonna bump and let's see what the call is. No basket as Jaden Marion went to the basket that I was gonna say it was on the floor. Maybe continuation at the college level here at the high school level, they're gonna say no. And they're gonna go with the inbound play. Brown quick trigger, can't fire, can't make it. Turnaround shot, no good. As the area boys come away with it. It's a three ball up top, no good. Tucker flying in for the rebound, can't control it, but able to get the ball over to his teammate. Now kicks it out up top, another three, no good. Couple of threes that time by the area boys. Folk with the last miss, couldn't knock it down. Here's Warren from the corner, no good. And the leak out pass down court, great find. Reverse layup, no good. Nathan Folk got a little fancy with it, perhaps a little bit too fancy that time. As it remains a two-point game, 12 minutes to play here in the first half. That goes in. I think that's the highlight of the night so far. Here's Macon up top. Tries to throw it down low. Can't find his teammate. Instead, Peterson picks it up. Here are the area boys. Samuels. And the, goal. the length of the court stops and pops around the three-point line. Give me the free throw line, and he puts it down. Jaleel Jones guarded by Dent. Now the ball finds its way back up top to Marion. Marion looking to drive in on Tucker and he finishes off the glass with the right hand. Tips it, but able, unable to come away with it. Folk has it, bringing the ball across half court. Bumps his defender, now over to Tucker. In the corner, Samuels once again. Can't hit it that time and a rebound by Macon. Tyler, a very quick paced game here these last couple of minutes. Yeah, and I mean, it warrants it. Wide open shots on both ends, I'd say, and uh, let's keep it coming. Yeah, it's been very exciting so far. We've had a, we're gonna have a, another substitution. Good defense on that time by Folk, able to strip the offense player on the way up. All right, it'll stay here with the Nick 10 boys. Here's Warren. Warren takes his man off the dribble. Can't finish through contact. Tucker with the rebound. Picked up by Marion across half court. Drops it off to Samuels. Excuse me. Dent fouled while going up. He'll get two from the line. Marquise Haynes and Vontez Dent both in the purple jerseys. Maybe the most colorful ones we've seen here tonight. 
Uh, the schools, of course, wear some of the darker jerseys whenever they are on the road, but the bright purple ones, a bit of a visual treat. Dent sinks the first. It's a one point game. Yeah, and I'd say the shade of purple they chose is not quite purple people eater color, but. Got a correction on that score. The. Like the scorekeeper gave that one to the Nick 10 boys. We have it as 20 to 17. They have 19 to 18 on the score bug. We'll make sure we figure that out as we can. Yeah, so Trevor, the one thing I would say about kind of seeing this much talent on the floor is just how basketball intelligent these players are. So it's going to be stripped away. Here's Tucker. Tucker leading the two on three. He stops and pops and drills it. Three points for Ryan Tucker as they lead by six. And when they had the intelligence, it just go, 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 go. Here's Chaney. Chaney in the corner trying to take Dent off the dribble. Can't find some space. Johnson out wide. That one no good. Tucker comes up with the rebound. Looking to pull up again. No, instead, this time he's going to drive, and he's going to be fouled from behind. Tag that time by Adam Brown on the drive. As Tucker has an opportunity to go to the line and extend this lead. First one up and good. We're about to the point where the first quarter would be ending. Uh, coach would have time to actually get a huddle formed with their players. However, a little bit different today. So Tucker goes two for two from the stripe. The area boys lead it 25 to 17. Here's Chaney. Chaney getting a screen from Johnson. Now drives left. Defended by Haynes, but he puts it up. Haynes going to be guarded up top by Chaney. This one passed off to Hively. Hively misses it off to the left. Rebound taken. Here's Chaney. He pulls up in transition, and he drills it. Rock Chaney with the three ball as they pull within three. Here's Samuels. Samuels trying to answer back. He's going to be fouled and won a four-point play opportunity as the Rockford Christian player sinks that one and one. Yeah, what an incredible play right there. Able to make the shot with someone not only in his face but also making contact with him. The Royal Lion is going and unfortunately misses the free throw attempt. Here's Brown, Brown is gonna lose it over to Hively, Hively in transition, throws it up for Tucker, can't throw it down, but finishes the alley-oop. Able to kind of direct that one into the basket. Chaney from the corner, steps back, pulls up, no good rebound, Johnson can't quite finish as well. Gets the follow, puts it up and in. Randy Johnson, one of the best players we saw from the Jayhawks this past season. So he's got length, he's got size, and he's got a quite vertical. Here is a slam by Malachi Johnson in transition. Tipped away by Rock Cheney, passes it down court to Johnson, and he throws it down with the right. Tucker loses it off his foot. Here's Cheney. Cheney trying to answer. Now he's just going to go up with the layup, plays a conservative. Uh, here's Dent as things have really gotten going here in the last minute or so. Tried to dish it off to his teammate. Dent has it. He steps back a little bit too far that time. Down court pass to Chaney. Chaney going to the corner. He's going to pull up for three. No good. Rebound Brown. Brown back up top to Johnson. He's got a lot of space. He's going to fire. And no good. Dent finally corrals it after a wild sequence. I got to say, Starting to look like the NBA All-Star game, I would say, in terms of defense, which fine with me in my book. It's Hively, Hively, no good, a little bit off. Down court pass to Brown. Brown looking to find his man in the corner. He's Johnson. This one no good, didn't hit anything. 
As Hively has it, passes it down court to Samuels. Nice pass down low to Dent. And what are we going to have here? I think we're going to have our first timeout of the half. As we'll take a break here watching boys high school basketball here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. And welcome back here on Clutch Sports Media where the area boys lead the Nick 10 boys 31 to 28. We're delighted to join the head coach of the Rock Valley Golden Eagles boys team, Nick Ramos. Nick, thank you so much for joining us here on the 25th annual Rising Star All-Star Classic here at uh, Rock Valley College. I appreciate it, thanks for having me. Got a foul here. So we've uh, definitely seen a very high pace, intense game, perhaps a little bit different than what we're used to seeing at the high school level. But uh, playing under these conditions, playing with the college rules, the, the 20 minute halves, definitely a bit of a different experience whenever you transition from high school to college basketball. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, but a lot of great athletes here today and just trying to put on a show for the fans. And we've seen some great highlights so far. But uh, we'll talk about your team, Nick. You know, you had a very good season. 22-10 uh, and 10 was the record. You know, the girls' team had a great season. You guys had a good team. I'm sure that's uh, a little bit of a fun rivalry between you and uh, their head coach. But uh, overall, another successful season for the Golden Eagles. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what made this year so successful for you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, first off, it's always, it's always tough trying to live in uh, Coach Watkins' shadow a little bit when he's, 34 and 0 and going to the national tournament but um coach brady hoff left a great foundation for us and um some big key pieces returned from last year's team and i was just able to come in and uh kind of just help steer him a little bit in the right way um a lot of stuff we did was based off what coach brady hoff did and just keep going leading in that right direction we see a lot of great talent here on the floor from both the nick 10 guys and the other area schools I know we've got some players that are uh, from the area in and around the Rockford area and the surrounding suburbs that uh, play not only on the basketball team but uh, other sports here at the college level as well. We talked about it a little bit in the girls game. You know, they've got a couple of uh, players coming in. But uh, it's always good when uh, some of the local talent can stay here, play for your local college, uh, even if, you know, some of them might go play for different schools as well. Yeah, I agree. Um we got um, Adam Brown from Belvedere North who will be coming here next year. Um, a couple other guys that were have on visits coming in, uh, Rakim Chaney, Montez Dent, a couple, uh, JT Samuels, uh, just to name a few. So, um, yeah, great town in the area. It's always nice to uh, keep them at home, and they usually tend to bring a pretty good crowd for a Rock Valley game, so it's nice to have them here. Indeed it is. Yeah, it's always fun when talent stays local. You know, we've got some great players in and around the Rockford area. One of the reasons that we're doing these broadcasts, we like to show that, uh, you know, the high school level and uh, going into the college level around the Rockford area, a lot of good talent. Speaking of the talent, you know, we've seen, a, a, as I mentioned coming into this, you know, we've seen a very high-paced action game, a lot of three balls, a lot of uh, – Open, open lanes to the to the rim as uh, maybe you don't necessarily want to see when guys are playing defense at the next level. But we can understand here in this all-star game type atmosphere that uh, these guys really want to show what they can do with the ball in their hands. 100%. We're just, uh, just hoping that it doesn't turn out to be like the NBA all-star game with almost, almost both teams scoring 200 points. So, um, But, yeah, they're putting on show. It's a lot of great, great guys playing. Yeah, we saw we had a great finish to the girls' game. We're hoping for something similar as there are 4.45 left to go here in the first half of action. 
Nick 10 on top, 39 to 36. Again, we're joined by Rock Valley College head coach Nick Ramos. As here's a drive, and there's going to be a foul underneath. So, Nick, you know, we talked about your season this past year. You talked about there's a couple of guys that are coming up through the high school ranks to play with the Golden Eagles next season. Uh, you know, what, what are you looking for to uh, continue your growth as you try to expand on what you guys did last year and, and try to uh, continue to improve? Um, just trying to bring in the best best people possible. Um, we want great people as well as great players. Um, I think we could do it with guys that are great in the classroom and off the court as well as on the court. So um, we're not going to sacrifice uh, talent for uh, just – how you act off the court so um i mean we're just trying to do things the right way and make sure we're building and continuing that rock valley basketball tradition in the right right way yeah, that's definitely the way to go about it of course we always love to see some great high flying action but uh being a pillar of your community is always a great thing to aspire to as well i know myself coming from the rockford area you know that's definitely something that uh, you want to strive for and uh, that's like what we'd like to see out of uh, not only the Golden Eagles, but uh, everybody that comes from the high school ranks here in the Rockford and uh, various other high schools in the Rockford region. 42-38 no, is the score in favor of the Nick 10 All-Star Boys. Chaney at the line, the player of the year in the Nick 10 a season ago. As we have a inbound play following the free throw make. So uh, one other question here for you, Coach Ramos, before we let you go, before halftime, as there we see a miss and a transition play by Michael Jaleel Jones. Uh, you know, we mentioned that we've seen some good uh, offensive play here tonight, seen a lot of three balls, but uh, one of the big things that is different, not only are the you can go from quarters to halves, but the extra 10 feet that you get with the basketball court can really make a big difference. Uh, is there a real big transition period when you take a freshman that uh, comes to play at the high school or from the high school level, uh, you know, trying to get adjusting to that quarter? Is that uh, kind of a, a thing that you can adjust to right away? Um, yeah, I think so. More not so just the length of the court, but more so the speed and just uh, physicality of the game to go along with more of the – the length of the three-point line it's not as close as a uh, high school line it just got further a couple years ago a few years ago changing to that FIBA line um, so I think that's one of the bigger uh, transitions guys coming in usually have to face is that deeper three-point line um, and just the physicality and speed of the game more more so than the length of the court second free throw by Warren is no good rebound taken by the area boys Problem. So here are the area boys as they trail by six points. Again, if you're just joining us here on Clutch Sports Media, we're joined by the head coach of the Rock Valley Golden Eagles, Nick Ramos. As here the ball finds its way into the corner and a nice move, can't quite finish, is Nathan Folk. Here is Chaney now on transition. He's going to kick it out. No, he's going to throw it back to Warren deep inside the free throw line as he sinks his shot as the Nick 10 school extends their lead to eight points. As Nick, we've seen a lot of good shooting here on the perimeter, not just from the three-point arc, but uh, that free throw line extended. We've seen a lot of these guys able to hit the bottom of the bucket here tonight. Drive by Cheney and a foul this time, slammed home by Michael Jaleel Jones. Good tip slam that time by the Guilford Viking. Vikings, of course, finished the regular season 18-0, capturing their second straight conference championship. It's always something to hang your hat on as you look back throughout your career. Rebound this time, that is by Marion, and he's going to kick it back to Chaney. Two minutes to go, 10-point lead here for the Nick 10 boys. As there are two minutes left to play here in this first half of basketball, as the Nick 10 boys on a bit of a run here, as they're going to say foul on the court. 
No shot by Warren, even though he was able to finish through contact. Have another line change here. So Nick, one of the interesting things that we've seen as well here in this game is it seems like both coaches are really doing some of the line changes as you were, you know, you're sh shifting in, you know, all five guys. It's uh, definitely a bit of a challenge whenever you have a lot of new faces that haven't played together. As we're kind of seeing that here, there's a lot of motion basketball, not a lot of set plays. But uh, I know, you know, from personal experience playing high school sports, playing with a bunch of new guys, just having a couple of practices is always a little bit difficult. Yeah, um, I know the uh, Nick 10 boys got to practice once here, and I don't believe the all-area boys uh, practiced at all before coming into play. So I think they're both just trying to move the ball as much as possible, <laughs> find, find good looks, and get shooter shots. Samuels lines up the triple, no good, but a rebound underneath and a finish through contact. Jack Hively, Hively out of Byron. Byron again captured another championship this season, led by Ryan Tucker, the all-time leading scorer in school history for the Byron Tigers, one of the best shooters that we've seen in the ranks here around the region as Hively cannot finish the and one opportunity. Got about a minute left here in the first half. Warren lines up a triple, no good, and a rebound by Dent. Hively has it, goes down court, fires up a triple, no good. A rebound by Dent, stays on his head, keeps it, passes it out to Samuels, but he cannot finish as well as the pace has been frenetic here tonight as both teams hovering around that 50 mark as we head towards the end of the first half. Here's Jaleel Jones trying to shake his man. Tucker playing good defense. Jones cannot finish. Taken away by Tucker. Tucker with the down court pass, a little bit too aggressive that time. As here's Brown, 19 on the clock. He's gonna pull up from beyond the arc. No good, goes over the back of the backboard. It'll be out of bounds and it'll go with the area boys. One final shot here for the end of the half. Tucker's got it. He's gonna pass it down to Dent, can't hold it. Here's Jones, passes it up court. This one is no good, so it falls off. After one, 48 to 42 in favor of the Nick 10. Again, head coach Nick Ramos, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure here tonight, here at the 25th annual Rising All-Stars Classic. They've put on a good show. They put on a good show that first game. The second game is more the same, a six-point game going into halftime. Appreciate you having me, and hopefully we have a great finish. All right, thank you much. Well. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. 
I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes at D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with that dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes at D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with that dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're doing. Number three is strength. Then we get to really get into the weight room and focus on the strength. And number four is core and conditioning. For me, conditioning is not a lot about what you can do. It's about that place that you're willing to go. You're willing to push yourself. And then we finish with a cool down. So that's our five-star workout here at D1. We believe it's proven. We believe it works. We believe it'll also work for you. So don't be afraid of showing up and let us help you take the next steps. D1. Brian Batcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell,
Brian works hard for his clients in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. D1 Training Rockford. Try their Rockford training facility for free. Call 815-569-5630 to learn more. Train different with D1. Nine Iron Belvedere. Enjoy a virtual golfing experience all winter long for solo practice sessions, business gatherings, or date night. Nine Iron. Golf. Game. Gather. Busy Beaver Tree Care. For exceptional tree services second to none, Busy Beaver Tree Care is your best option. We're a local, family-owned, and operated business founded in 2003. We're not satisfied until you are. Waterside Financial Advisors is teaming up with the Guilford Vikings to bring you more than just a game. Get ready to shoot for your goals as they provide independent financial guidance for the life you want to live. Elevate your game both on and off the court with reliable financial guidance from Waterside Financial Advisors. Go Vikings! Tonight's game is presented by Brian Falk State Farm. Call Brian at 815-398-2552. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Seiler. I think one of the special things about D1 is it's not about D1's goal. It's about your goal. Wherever you're at, whatever that goal is, maybe it's to make the high school team, maybe it's to lose 20 pounds, whatever it is, you show up, you tell us your goal, and let us help you get there. One of the themes at D1 is to level up. No matter where you are, our heart is to help you take the next step. What would be your goal? Why do you show up to train? Personally, I would like to put the ball forward. How can you get 1% better today? Just be the person next to me, be myself every day. When you show up here, you have that mindset of, hey, I got a goal, I'm gonna embrace the grind, and I would rather experience the pain of discipline than the pain of regret. So what is D1 Five Star Training? Number one, it starts with that dynamic warm-up. They're getting our body in the position, in the place we need it so that we can perform, which is number two, because performance for an athlete is king. But our effort is 90% or more of whatever exercise we're And we are back here at Rock Valley High School, Rock Valley College for the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic between the Nick 10 boys and the area boys here on Clutch Sports Media presented by the Rockford Lightning. Had a great interview with head coach Nick Ramos. Golden Eagles coming off a very successful season in which they finished 22 and 10. Here on the hard court, it is the Nick 10 boys leading by six coming into the second half, 48 to 42. Tyler, what are you looking for as we start the second half of action here? Our second 20 minute half of the evening. Uh, really looking to see if the area boys can uh, shrink that lead that's now extended to eight points and uh, have a close game going in the final two, three minutes. Here is Samuels. He tries to pass it down low to Hively, but can't make a connection. A nice pass from Johnson to Rock Cheney. He kind of put a little flourish on that one. As the Nick 10 boys now have a 10 point lead. Here's Tucker lines up a triple, a touch short, but a rebound by Hively, who turns around a little seven foot jumper, no good. And Johnson has this one, hands it off to Huey. Huey with some speed, no good, good defense underneath. Johnson off the pass from Cheney. He gets it back on the rebound again, and this one he throws down as he is really feeling himself one of the best players for the best team in conference this season this season quick response no good that time by peterson out of peck johnson over to cheney cheney to randy johnson as his shot no good good defense that time by hively who brings the ball up court he tries to finish through brown and he cannot as Cheney throws it up with the left-handed layup. And the Nick 10 boys really putting it on here to start off this second half of action. They already have nine points here in the first two minutes. 
Yeah, area boys just aren't quite sinking the shots they need to sink. Here's a three ball in response. There is Tommy Hero from the corner as they finally are able to take the lid off the bucket to start this second half of action. Be interesting to see as well, Tyler, you know, we talked about it with the girls game, the 10 foot of court that you have in addition. There's a nice move by Brown. But here in the boys game, not only that, but you also have the two 20 minute halves as we mentioned in the first half. But uh, it's really gonna be interesting to see how these players can keep their legs here as Hively cannot quite get the verticality that time. As Johnson throws it down, he is able to respond in kind. He still got the energy underneath him. Quite the uh, flourish of activity right there. Here's a, another three that time by Hero. He's got a couple of three balls here to start off this second half of action. We'll see if they try to continue to use that three-point shot. As Rock Cheney sinks it. With the step back three right there. Nick 10 boys really putting it on on offense as they have a 16 point lead. Here's Hero trying to sink his third in a row, no good. Johnson has it, kicks the ball out in front, throws it into the corner. Brown, he's got it no good, but this one's gonna be tipped up and in. Might have gone off of Hively. Basket will be credited to Randy Johnson. But a 18 point lead here for the Nick 10 boys. They have not missed too many shots here to start off this second half of action. What a minute of basketball, right? They just shot after shot going up. Here's Johnson, he's guarded by Tucker, takes him off the dribble, gets it over to Cheney. Cheney from the corner, no good, but Johnson able to take away the rebound. Gonna step back beyond the arc, this time no good. Brown underneath, as we're gonna have a substitution. Take Vontez Dent coming back into the ball game. So the one thing, especially it being an all-star game, is that if a team gets down quite a bit, I don't wanna see them quit. So I mean, 17 point lead right now for Nick 10. Make that 15 as Tucker drives the lane. Uh, don't want the area boys to kind of hang their heads low. After all, it's just having fun and you know making a great game. And we'll see if they continue their perimeter shooting. Here's Huey, lines up a triple. No good, but Hero with the rebound. Leading the four on two. Dent from the free throw line. No good. Johnson pulls in the rebound. Fighting for the ball. Taken by Hero, he lines up a triple again, can't quite hit it. Dent following the tip, and Dent's gonna go and one, fouled by Johnson on his way up. He's got a shot to bring this ball game within 11. And Dent, ever since coming in the game, has really just been attack, attacking on offense and defense, which uh, I'm sure is kind of what some of those players on the floor needed, is a teammate to kind of do that for them. Quick correction, this is a opportunity to go within 12. As Dent sinks it, now a 67 to 55 ball game. Tyler, you know we did a lot of basketball this past season. You're finishing out the season with this all-star game. Uh, we've got some spring sports coming up, some softball, baseball. But, uh, if we have more days like it was here today in the Rockford area, I uh, cannot wait to be outside bringing you those spring sports that we all love to play. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, I heard even possibly a track meet later on in May, so uh, quite the quite the variety we have going on here at Clutch Sports Media 815. Yeah, be sure to follow us on social media platforms at Clutch Sports 815 to be sure to keep our keep up to date with our schedule to see what we are doing, where we're going to be. So we have a brief stoppage. Not quite sure what's going on here. As now we are good to play. Dent has the ball, bringing it up court. Area boys trail by 14. Nick 10 boys have really been hot this second half of action. 
This was a six point game at the half. And a nice move, splitting the defense, but he blows the tire at the end, Jack Hive. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. A couple of down here in tonight's ball game. Samuels no good, rebound Chaney. He leads the charge up court, gives the Johnson once again. He's going to be stripped on the way up by Hero. This one finds its way up to Brown for three, and he's nothing but net. Adam Brown sinks another triple, and just like that, it's back to 19 points in favor of the Nick 10 boys. That's kind of been the story of the second half. It's just the area boys have put up shots, but just been unlucky and not sinking them. Here's Brown on the wing. He's going to find his teammate. That's Macon. Now back to Brown, and they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. And with that, we're going to have a, another of substitutions for both squads as Johnson checks out of the ball game after that right-handed slam dunk. Here is Haynes bringing the ball up court for the area boys. Passes off the screen. Now this ball finds its way out of bounds as Soltau could not handle the pass as there was a little bit of velocity on that one that time. The Nick 10 basketball here. Who are you gonna bring the ball up court for the Indians? Get the screen from Brown. He has guarded up top, taking his man off the dribble. Stops and pops from the free throw line. No good. Rebound, Dent. Dent is going to pull up from beyond the arc, this time only able to make contact with the net. No rim. Brown in the corner in transition. No good. Rebound by the area boys. Here's Folk. Going to stop and throw up a three ball, and he sinks it. Nathan Folk for three. We'll see if he is going to try to take a couple. Of course, Tyler in an all-star game. You sink one. You want to get the ball back on the next possession as Michael Jaleel Jones responds with a triple of his own. But the area boys probably have got to start throwing up some more three balls if they want to get back into this ball game. Yeah, and... Yeah, and unfortunately, just everything they're putting up is not going in. Yeah, they're getting good looks, but uh, it's just not finding the bottom of the net. Here's Macon with the <laughs> shot. Might have even been fouled on the way down by Folk. No call, however. Whereas the Nick 10 boys seem to be the complete opposite, where some of the shots are really contested, and they're going down no problem. Brown can't finish, but a rebound by Macon. Finds its way into the corner for Brown again, and he sinks it again. Adam Brown just putting on a show tonight. He has made numerous threes here, as it is a 24-point lead here for the Nick 10 boys. They've outscored their opponent by 18 through eight minutes of action here in the second half. Yeah, and a lot, a lot of those have just been big runs by the Nick 10 boys where uh, just the area boys haven't been able to make their shots, and uh, that's created this huge deficit. Good free throw up and good by Dent. Dent playing for Rockford Lutheran. As we're going to see another substitution. Braden Brown checks into the ball game for the Nick 10 boys. We're going to have a timeout, so we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our sponsors. You're watching High School Basketball here on Clutch Sports Media, presented by the Rockford Lightning. The Rockford Lightning, Rockford's first semi-pro women's basketball team. Stay up to date on team news on their Instagram and Facebook feeds. Brian Botcher with Exit Realty. Whether you want to buy or sell, Brian works hard for his clients in Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin. Call 815-378-2170 today. 
Siler Financial, our family helping your family. Listen to 1440 WROK every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Navigating Retirement with Drew Siler. And we are back live here at Rock Valley College where it is the 25th annual Rising Star All-Star Classic here between the Nick 10 boys and the area boys. It has a three ball up, no good that time for Macon. Trevor Larson and Tyler Fowler on the call here tonight as we have been without you through this basketball season. Good drive to the hoop that time by Soltau. As they pull back within 20. Tyler, we were talking during that break, but uh, really it seems like in the second half of action, pretty much anything that the Nick 10 boys throw at the rim is going down. And even the open shots that the area boys are taking, uh, there have been some really good looks. It's just not falling for them here tonight. Yeah, and it's one of those things, unfortunately, where if everyone on the floor is in the cold streak, then uh, you're not going to score very many points. Soltau with the rebound. He gives it off to Folk. Folk now out to... Excuse me, that was Haynes for a three. No good. But the area boy is able to get the rebound and put it up. Making a cross half court. Is it over to Michael Jaleel Jones? Who bullies his way through the rim. He's going to get fouled on the shot attempt. No good, but he'll shoot two at the line. That was a good give and go between him and uh, Marion, if I'm not mistaken. First free throw up and good for Michael Jaleel Jones. JT Samuels will check back in the ball game for the area boys. Jaleel Jones, an outstanding athlete. We saw him have some great performances this year. Uh, that final game of the season where Guilford was able to complete their undefeated season, he had a big impact alongside a couple of his teammates. And I'm sure, you know, they're going to look back on his career with fondness, but uh, with the Guilford Vikings, it's definitely going to be tough to replace a player like him. We'll see what they can do following a back-to-back -back conference championship for the Guilford Vikings. And that goes for a lot of the schools representing here today. Uh, quite the outstanding athletes we have out on the court. Uh, not easy to replace these young men. So finish at the basket. That time for Samuels. Yeah, Tyler, for uh, high school and uh, college, but uh, definitely more so for high school. You know, you've only got four years with these guys. Sometimes, you know, players, their families might move. Sometimes you transfer uh, in conference, out of conference. But, you know, finding those players, that's why you got to have a really good, strong support system, good coaching staff, and uh, you really got to focus on player development for some of your underclassmen. And I'm sure that uh, you know, they're going to miss his production next year, but I'm sure their coaches have some players lined up that are really ready to take the mantle, as is, can be said for uh, all the players out here tonight on the basketball court. Yeah, and yeah, like you said, oh, as we almost had a highlight play right there. But uh, and that goes, you know, like you said, starts at the lower levels all the way to middle squads. Area boys steal the ball, nice easy layup. Uh, and I'd say that the schools represented here typically have that in place, that uh, solid lower level coaching development. And the usual suspects as they were in both conferences as a nice jumper that time by Jaden Marion. But, uh, you know, you hear some of the same schools about this year, definitely at least in the Nick 10, a couple of big shakeups. You know, Belvedere North, we talked about their best season ever really uh, from the boys basketball side had the most wins all time in their program history uh, and then you know there's a couple teams that had some down years I'm sure they're going to pick it back up you know we talk about Boylan when, when we saw those two teams square up but uh, you know with the, the coaching infrastructure you know you never know what could happen you know you might get a good player I'm thinking the girls side you know Emma Pearson for Belvedere you know they have not traditionally been one of the powerhouses in the Nick 10 but they've got they've got some great you know, they got a great road ahead of them with uh, some of the players that are going to be moving into that upperclassman. As we see a player down in the corner, hopefully he is okay. 
Down, not sure if uh, he's gonna be okay. And that was Jaden Marion. He is now back up to his feet. Not sure if he just rolled an ankle or something as Dent is able to finish up through contact as Marion will check out. He's a little bit frustrated, favoring that right leg. But uh, getting back to it, Tyler, you know, uh, you know, sometimes all it takes is one player to kind of turn around a program. And uh, we're going to see if uh, any players emerge. You know, again, the usual suspects are going to be there, but uh, get a good player like we've seen through some of these teams. And Yeah, like I said, it just takes one player. And uh, that's why you play the games, to see if, you know, your team is better than the others. Finished through contact as the score now 92 to 74 in favor of the Nick 10 boys. As Dent has an opportunity to bring this back to a 17 point lead. Chipped away a little bit, but the Nick 10 boys just staying out in front. Area boys going to need a big run here. 735 left to play in the ball game. Free throw up, no good. A rebound taken by Marion, but he will stay in the ball game. Here's Malachi Johnson, goes behind the back, guarded by Dent, he can't finish, and not able to grab his own rebound. Here's Soltau, a nifty pass, tried to get it down court to his teammate JT Samuels, but could not. He was shielded by both the referee and a couple of players. That one goes out of bounds, and it'll be Nick 10 basketball. Seven minutes left in the game here as steal by Samuel. Samuel's going up and he's gonna be fouled from behind and one. Haken riding his hip all the way down there. And this is a big opportunity, Tyler. I know it's still a pretty big deficit, 16 points. You've made the last two baskets. Got an opportunity to bring this down within 15. You get a couple of stops, a couple more made shots. You never know what might happen. There's still plenty of time. You know, we're talking about it as it's the last, you know, there's only seven minutes on the clock, but really this is not very much different than uh, the fourth quarter of, an, uh, of a ball game. So if there's some guys that have some fresher legs than others, you never know what could happen as Braden Brown sinks that triple and see it for just like that brings the lead back up to 19. Yeah, it's, it seems like every time the area boys have an answer, uh, the Nick 10 just answers right back. Right spot is Brock Soltau able to get that one off the short rebound, put it back up. Nick 10 boys five points away from triple digits. Didn't see that in any of our games this year, although the Byron Tigers came close in their final game of the season. Here is Johnson drives. He's going to be fouled and he's going to go to the line to shoot two. Dent had him on that contact. Yeah, I mean, that's with the shot clock and everything, that kind of lends it to a more fast-paced, higher-scoring game. So, uh, you know, although we might not see it a lot with high school, uh, obviously they're playing underneath collegiate rules, so uh, much more likely, and especially with the talent we have out here on the court. Uh, probably is going to happen in the next minute or two. Johnson sank the first of two. His second free throw is up, and it is good. The lead back out to 19 points, 97 to 78 in favor of the Nick 10 boys here tonight. As Dent cannot hit the three ball, he gets the ball right back. Tried to go up for the dunk, but there was a defender, Jaden Marion, who had it. And a nice find underneath. <laughs> as he was able to find his teammate underneath the basket as the area boys now at the 80 point threshold. Johnson going into Dent once again. He is feeling himself. Has a little bit of a word for Dent as he comes back on the court. All in good fun here tonight in this all-star game action. Nice drive that time by Hydley. Michael Jaleel Jones bringing the ball up court. He is guarded by Samuels. Nick 10 boys have a chance to make it triple digits on the night. There's Jaleel Jones and instead of that he is not able to touch iron. 
Instead, out of bounds. To the area boys basketball. 99-82 is the score in favor of Nick 10. 5-22 on the clock. Here on Clutch Sports Media, 815. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Saturday evening for the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic. It's going to be stolen away by Cheney. Cheney with a nice finger roll. And just like that, we are in triple digits. 101-82. Tyler feels like an NBA score with where we're at right now. Especially compared to what we are used to as Dent drives and misses. Rebound Johnson. Brown has the ball. Fast cross-court pass to Huey, who lines up a triple, and he throws it down. Isaiah Huey. A great shot as the lead is back above 20. Shot in rhythm by Marquise Haynes. No good. Here's Cole Warren. Rock Cheney. Didn't really even jump on that layup attempt. Uh, a bit of a weird shot look right there. As this one's going to be handed off, no good. Re long rebound to Brown. Ahead to Warren. Warren's going to line up a triple. This one no good, been fast paced. A couple guys that time didn't even cross half court as they felt that shot coming by Cole Warren out of Hananiga. Lively with the turnaround jumper, no good, and that's uh, pretty much how it's been here in the second half. Johnson gets the ball down court. Good footwork that time as the Nick 10 boys hold a 106-82 lead, 3.58 left to play here in tonight's action. And Ryan Tucker checking in for the area boys. See if he can put up some quick points. Saw him put up, again, like 30 or so points in less than 15 minutes of action earlier in this season. As this three is no good that time, shot by Hero. Had a couple of threes to start off the second half. And a little bit cold here towards the end of the game. Denton down court to Tucker. Tucker steps in. Now taking Warren off the dribble. Got tipped, so instead throws the ball out to Dent. Dent drills three. Chaney has his eyes up, was looking for Johnson down court instead. Now he's going to take his man off the dribble. Guarded closely by Hively. And his shot up and good. Nice little 16-foot jumper that time by the player of the year in the Nick 10, Raheem Chaney out of Auburn. Very impressed with Chaney. I know I didn't get a chance to uh, call a game for him in his high school careers. And this is my first time seeing him. Very impressed with the player. He had a good performance against Guilford. They could not quite keep pace with the Vikings in that final game of the season. As Warren misses that one. But a fantastic player. Led the Knights to a 14-4 record. Second in the conference. Again, behind the Guilford Vikings. Finished 18-0 this past season. Adam Brown's going to be tagged with a foul. 108, 87, 224 left to play in this one. It's been all Nick 10 boys here in the second half. They led by six at the start of the half and now hold a 21 point lead as they have done it at all three levels inside, outside, and the mid range game here tonight in the 25th annual Rising Stars All Star Classic. Second free throw by Hero is good. Thinks one of two. We'll see if the teams really slow it up here towards the end of this ball game. Like they're going to form a bit of a half court trap. Ball in the corner to Brown. No good. Rebound Chaney. Chaney waits, waits, waits. And a nice move that time. Able to spin that one up on the rim and down. Three ball, no good. Rebound taken by Macon. Going to be stolen away by Tucker. Tucker still playing hard. Finds his teammate Hively. Hively, if he had thoughts about throwing that one down, took the smart route, just put it up. Got a bit of a grin on his face as he walks back down the court. A half-court shot by Cheney is good. 
Rock Cheney from midcourt just pulls up and drills it. <laughs> That's that uh, some Caitlin Clark range right there. A little bit of a buzz here in the arena as a cross down court pass, no good. Threw that one up and uh, kind of turned around, had a little bit of a smile on his face at that time. I honestly was not expecting that one. He kind of caught me out <laughs> as it's 113 to 90 in favor of the Nick Tent boys, a minute 15 on the clock. Hively from the logo, this one no good. Couldn't quite answer the call right there. And those uh, tired legs perhaps as there's uh, about a minute left on the clock here. And a nice slam dunk by Jaden Marion, right-handed finish. Let's see if Tucker has anything on tap for us. There we go, a uh, slam dunk by Jack Hively. A little bit more pep in his step that time down. As the sea is kind of parted here, as there are 45 seconds left to go. See if we've got any more theatrics. And alley-oop, Isaiah Huey to Michael Jaleel Jones, an impressive display of athleticism as they're having fun with it. This might just be 30 seconds of highlights right here. That's what we're hoping. Backcourt cut, Dent, no good. Maybe they're going to try it once more. A three ball that time. Mason Peterson. As Johnson with the highlight reel, exclamation point. Malachi Johnson throws it down one more time. We'll see if there's anything left to go here. I think it's another dunk. Five seconds left. Enough time for one more highlight. Can't quite throw the dunk down, but making the two points will count. Final score, 121 to 97. Nick Tenton boys in complete control in that second half. And it's a great way to finish out the basketball season, Tyler. You know, had a bit of a competitive game, a little bit out of hand in that second half, but uh, the talent was certainly on display for both sides here tonight. It was, and uh, like you said, or I, I, it was said that uh, Braden Brown will be returning to this court next year as a Golden Eagle and uh, quite a few other area boys potentially ending up here. So, I mean, uh, this court's going to see plenty of uh, uh, highlights that we saw tonight. So for Tyler Fowler, I am Trevor Larson. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, to be kept abreast of our future highlights and future broadcasts as we move on to the spring sports. Be sure to follow us on social media at Clutch Sports 815, Instagram X, variety of other platforms. You've been watching the 25th annual Rising Stars All-Star Classic here on Clutch Sports Media, presented by the Rockford Lightning. Thank you so much for joining us here this Saturday evening, and we will catch you on our next broadcast.